During Tesla's most recent Q2 2023 investor conference call held on July 19th, Drew Baglino shared some extremely exciting and encouraging Gigafactory Texas 4680 production news, including mention of a 10% energy boost for their new Cybercell, a massive increase in 4680 production, and more. So in this video, I'm going to discuss this exciting news and also provide some added context as well. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. In a previous video, I mentioned how Joe Tegmeyer has been capturing drone footage of Gigafactory Texas construction over the last several years. And Joe recently captured video footage of a Tesla 4680 battery manufacturing equipment delivery, which once again is a great sign for the 4680 production ramp as the production of Cybertruck release candidates at Gigafactory Texas has begun. 4680 battery production is happening at Gigafactory Texas right now, and that team has been able to produce 10 million 4680 battery cells. Um, and that was at the last update that Tesla shared on Twitter. So the factory is producing uh, batteries right now. Um, but on the topic of increased 4680 battery production, Drew Baglino mentioned the following during the most recent investor conference call. Quote, first, I'll just start with a bit of a production update. So in Texas, 4680 cell production increased 80% Q2 over Q1, and the team surpassed 10 million production cells produced here in Texas. So congrats to the team for that. On the official Tesla Twitter account, this was shared out with this image, this news about the, the team there at Gigafactory Texas producing 10 million battery cells. That's, of course, a huge achievement and really just the beginning of the production ramp because 10 million battery cells, while it is a lot of battery cells, on the grand scheme of things, um, Tesla needs to produce uh, many more millions to be able to hit the kind of production that will hopefully eventually come out of this factory. But it's a great start and a great milestone, and it's really encouraging that Drew would mention an 80% increase of production from Q1 to Q2. So with this 80% jump and with Tesla installing more equipment at Gigafactory Texas, based on that equipment delivery, it looks like the 4680 production ramp at Gigafactory Texas is really starting to take off. So the next 10 million, 100 million, and so on should happen much faster and at a quicker pace. Now, I don't know the exact start date when Tesla started manufacturing 4680 batteries at Gigafactory Texas. However, back in late September of 2022, Dylan from Electrified on YouTube mentioned in a video citing info from one of his sources that Tesla was then producing around 10,000 4680 battery cells per day at that point, once again, in late September of 2022. In a previous video, I extrapolated back using that 10 million cell production number that Tesla announced on Twitter. Um, I used that number and extrapolated back using a September, a late September date for that 10,000 per day. And I believe it's very possible right now that with that 80% increase from Q1 to Q2 and just kind of tracking back a little bit, I believe that Tesla is currently at, or at least um, hit recently, a rate of around 75,000 or up to 100,000. So somewhere in between there, 75,000 to 100,000, 4680 battery cells being produced per day at Gigafactory Texas. I believe that's roughly where they are right now. Of course, I could be wrong, but just using the available data that we have, I believe that they likely are somewhere around that right now. Now back to Drew's comment in the Q2 2023 conference call, once again, talking about the cell production team, quote, their focus on yield reduced our scrap bill by 40% quarter over quarter, and that resulted in a 25% reduction in cell cost of goods sold. So a 40% reduction in scrap. I assume this means that um, Tesla reduced the number of battery cells or at least partially completed battery cells that needed to be scrapped by 40%. This, of course, is directly connected to cost of goods sold because the less battery cells that have to be scrapped and the more that actually make it through the process and are deemed A-grade battery cells ready to be put into a vehicle, the more that make it through that process, um, it decreases your cost of goods sold. And so a 40% decrease is, of course, huge when it comes to the scrap rate. 
Now, moving back to Drew's comments, this particular comment is probably the most exciting in my opinion when it comes to what we learned from the conference call because Drew mentioned, quote, here in Texas, we're preparing to launch our Cybertruck cell, which is 10% higher energy density than current production. That was accomplished through process and mechanical design optimization. Notice that Drew specifically mentioned that this new Cybertruck cell, so the battery cells that are going to be put in the Cybertruck, um, they were able to achieve that energy density gain, quote, through process and mechanical design optimization. A little bit later in the call, Drew Baglino did clarify um, that a little bit by saying, quote, against our battery energy density targets, the cyber cell is at our expectations on a like for like electrochemistry basis, where we're yet to integrate silicon or in-house cathode production, both reviewed on battery day, which do bring significant further energy density and cost improvements. So when it comes to what Drew is referring to there, when he mentioned this didn't come from adding silicon to the anode, this boost in energy density, um, while there are a number of ways that Tesla can improve the energy density of battery cells, including chemistry changes, this change did not involve chemistry changes, but rather I believe it's related to a topic that I've talked about in quite a few of the past videos, and it was mentioned in a recent Tesla patent application. Basically, Tesla was able to redesign the battery cell itself, um, delete one of the parts, and also redesign the way the battery cap and that battery cap assembly connected to the electrode jelly roll. And they did that in such a way, it allows more room for the jelly roll itself, which leads to an increase in energy density. So this new cyber cell, which I believe is just the name for Tesla's second generation 4680 battery cell, that is the design change that I believe led to a 10% increase in energy density. That's a big deal because once Tesla actually does incorporate things like silicon into the anode and any other tweaks like that to the chemistry, that's going to be on top of the gains here just by redesigning the battery cell itself. So this is a big deal. Now, briefly talking about adding silicon to the battery. At battery day, Tesla mentioned using silicon in the 4680 battery anode and by using a little bit of silicon in the anode, that would increase range by 20%. And when Tesla refers to an increase of range by 20%, I believe that's really just kind of a code word for an increase of energy density by, let's just say roughly 20%. So it's possible in the future when Tesla starts incorporating silicon into the anodes of their 4680 batteries um, in a manner that was uh, talked about at battery day or something similar, that it's very possible that they could see a 20% energy density gain, for instance. And that would be huge, and I'll talk about the implications of that shortly. But also in these comments, Drew Baglino did mention something about in-house cathode production, and um, I believe here he's talking about the cathode precursor materials, the production of those that will be made at the new cathode building at Gigafactory Texas. Because Tesla is currently purchasing and bringing in the precursor material for their cathodes um, and using that to manufacture the electrodes of batteries. But when this facility is opened up at Gigafactory Texas, they'll be able to take raw materials and uh, process those into the precursor materials. And during that process, that's when lithium is added to the cathode materials. Once the cathode materials processing facility is up and running very efficiently at Gigafactory Texas, that should decrease the cost of goods sold for batteries because once again, they'll be taking raw materials and doing the processing in-house and they won't have to pay an outside supplier to do that processing and pay them a markup for doing that process. So this is going to be important when it comes to cost of goods sold for battery cells. When you couple those advantages with the IRA incentives um, for battery manufacturing, that's also going to be huge when it comes to reducing battery costs in the future. Now, when it comes to the 10% energy boost that Drew Baglino mentioned for the new cyber cell, um, if you use a 10% improvement over the previous generation of battery, the Gen 1 4680 battery cell, using data, for instance, that Jordan from the limiting factor on YouTube shared, the Gen 1 4680 Tesla battery cell 
likely had a cell level energy density somewhere around 244 watt hours per kilogram. So if Tesla's new cyber cell has 10% more energy density than that, then it's very likely that the cell level energy density of this new second generation cell is somewhere around 268 watt hours per kilogram. Potentially if Tesla is able to add silicon to the anode, and achieve a 20% energy density gain by doing that. And of course, it may not be 20% right away. It may be gradual where they put just a very small amount of silicon in and a little more and a little more with time as they prove that out. But nonetheless, eventually, if Tesla is able to achieve a 20% energy density gain on top of these numbers, that could lead to an energy density at the cell level for a silicon added 4680 battery cell of around 322 watt hours per kilogram. Since this new battery cell is being referred to as a cyber cell, I believe that it's going to be reserved for the Cybertruck and that the 4680 equipped Model Y will very likely still include first generation 4680 battery cells, which as far as I know, the Fremont pilot facility is still producing first generation battery cells mostly. And that's what I believe will be used in the 4680 equipped Model Y for now until 4680 battery production really ramps up quite a bit more. And there's enough battery cells for not only Cybertruck production, but also Model Y production as well. Now, beyond the energy density of the battery cells, let's actually talk about the amount of watt hours that are stored in each one of these batteries. Once again, using data that was shared by Jordan from the limiting factor on YouTube. Each Gen 1 4680 battery cell holds approximately 86.5 watt hours of energy. We know that the standard range all wheel drive 4680 equipped Model Y has 828 battery cells. And if you do the math, that means that battery pack is roughly 71.6 kilowatt hours. Now, once again, I don't believe that Tesla is going to immediately use these cyber cells or the Cybertruck cells in the Model Y, but just for an example here, since we have a range number to go off of, if Tesla were to use these battery cells in the Model Y as just a point of example, showing how important energy density is when it comes to range, if they were to use these new cyber cells in the Model Y with a 10% energy density gain, that could mean that each one of these battery cells have around 95 watt hours of energy per battery. So with 828 cells, that would make up roughly a battery pack that would be 78.7 kilowatt hours. And then once again, assuming a 20% energy density gain in the future by adding silicon, um, it could be up to 20%, for instance, as Tesla mentioned at battery day, such a cell could hold up to 114 watt hours per battery cell, which would mean that 828 of those battery cells in a Model Y would equal around 95.4 kilowatt hours of energy. With battery pack sizes like that, a Gen 2 battery cell with that 10% increase could actually have a range over 300 miles if that was incorporated into the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y. And with a third gen cell or some other future generation, if it had a battery pack over 95 kilowatt hours, once again possible with um, 114 watt hours per battery cell, that could equate to a range for the Model Y of over 360, nearly 370 miles of range. So once again, increasing the energy density of a battery cell is a big deal, and it's especially important when it comes to a vehicle like the Cybertruck. Yes, I expect the Cybertruck to be more efficient than other vehicles. However, it's still a big vehicle. It's obviously not going to be as efficient as the Model Y, the Model 3, something like that but I do expect it to be quite efficient and being able to um, have more energy dense batteries in that, not only now with this new cyber cell, but also in the future with possible chemistry tweaks, that's going to be huge. So this is big news and an energy density gain does have huge benefits. Now, moving back to Drew Baglino's comments in the Q2 2023 conference call, Drew mentioned, quote, as we scale cyber cell production through the end of the year and early next, we should be in a comfortable place on cost per cell. Obviously, when you're ramping up any new product, including battery cells, the cost of goods sold is much higher at the beginning until the production process is uh, more efficient. And it's encouraging that Tesla is making great strides when it comes to the cost of battery cells. And Drew is very happy with where they are and where they're going with the cost of their battery cells. So that's really encouraging news when it comes to 
um, 4680 manufacturing, and that means that it's getting much more efficient with time. Now on that same topic, once again, during that call, Drew mentioned, quote, lastly, it is important to remember that most of what we focused on at Battery Day was the Tesla engineered 4680 production system and the improvements we strove to achieve on equipment, factory density, capital cost, and utility cost reduction, all of which we are realizing in our Texas scale up to date. So when Drew mentions that they're realizing some of these goals when it comes to, for instance, he said here, equipment, factory density, capital cost, and utility cost reduction, I believe it's important that I refer back to this particular slide that was shown during Tesla's Battery Day presentation, where they showed a dollar per kilowatt hour reduction and an investment per gigawatt hour reduction. And you can see here they had some large numbers, a 56% reduction in the dollar per kilowatt and a 69% reduction in the investment per gigawatt hour there. So big numbers there. And it appears like at least sections here, like the cell factory and some things like that, they're achieving their goals here. So once again, this is big news and very encouraging news for Tesla's 4680 battery production. To wrap all of this up, this really was, in my opinion, one of the most encouraging 4680 production updates that we've received from Tesla's conference calls. And um, it appears like the 4680 battery production ramp, specifically at Gigafactory Texas, is about to ramp up very quickly. Hopefully we will see Gigafactory Berlin 4680 battery production start in the near future, as well as the Gigafactory Nevada expansion as well. But nonetheless, it appears like Gigafactory Texas is well on their way to ramping up cell production. And I expect great news in future conference calls and huge increases in the future. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.